Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics and today we're going to draw a upper torso in a comic style and also talk about some of the wrinkles too. So we'll do the anatomy but then also add like, you know, a shirt with some wrinkles. So, uh, you know, lots of requests for clothing. So this should, uh, should be something that uh, most of you want to see. So also let me know too, I transitioned my studio one more time. Let me know if the echo is too distracting. I'm still trying to get that uh, rectified, but I didn't want to stop bringing you content over it, so I'm waiting for some of that acoustic foam to uh, hopefully get rid of this problem and put more furniture in the room. Echo is always a, a beast. Okay, so with the torso, uh, you know, first establish some kind of cross section. In this case, I've already started drawing the pectoral muscles or the chesticles, as some people like to call them. Um, so there's, you know, the chest area, something like that. And for the uh, stomach muscles, I like to draw this like this line that comes up, over, and down. It's kind of an over stylized representation or overly maybe dramatic, uh, you know, version of what's really there. Uh, the main thing is, is that by doing this, you get to, you know, kind of stage the work, segment it out. So then I'll bring the, uh, like if I've got the chest coming out this way, I bring the stomach muscles back in and down. It just looks a bit more interesting instead of just bringing a line straight down. Uh, so this one tends to like look more tucked in. So something like this. I always do these kind of overly angular lines there. I think it looks cool. So let me just kind of drop this in real quick. I probably won't explain every single aspect of this. Uh, but just so we can get this and uh, some wrinkles in here. But I do like to draw the anatomy. Even if I'm gonna cover it up, I find that I, I still kind of draw a lot of this. Uh, call me crazy, because it's probably a waste of time, but uh, it, I just feel like the work comes out better if I draw the underlying structure. Now you've got collarbones here, but generally, uh, if the arms are raised, the pectoral muscles are gonna come up and kind of cover those a bit more. Not always, it really uh, depends on the amount of muscle the person has and you know everybody's anatomy is a bit different obviously but uh, let's try to figure out where these shoulders will connect so something like this and around I'm not gonna get too far into this I'll probably just come up to the uh, the traps here and then we'll, we'll apply the uh, shirt material so something like this so the arms kind of raised up a little bit more of an action shot and then you know this part you get the shoulder muscle will kind of protrude up right here and you get a little dip here from where it connects so it's like collarbone this dip this part of the um, shoulder comes up you see the segmentation here this kind of dips back and that's where the the trap or trapezius comes in so something like that but that's about it we're not going to get too far into trying to draw these i know a lot of people want to know more about uh, shoulder muscles as well. I'll be honest, it's not my uh, strong suit. You just see me kind of faking it is what I'm doing here. Like, I uh, I know a little bit about the muscles, but I don't I don't know my anatomy like I should. Um, actually, studying it pretty hardcore and realizing how much there is to it. It's just insane. But um, but I will be doing more anatomy lessons as I keep beefing up my skills. I actually just bought two big anatomy books just for that reason. So. Just so you know, I am working on it. So let's, this should give us enough to work on. So let's add the uh, Latimus Dorsey, Lats, Latimus, something like that. And then you got your obliques, I think. I like to call this the love handle, even though we all know superheroes don't have love handles. They're just too darn fit for that. So something like that. So one arm up, the other one's still kind of up, but out more. And, you know, you can get in here and do all your neck muscles and all that. But we don't need that for what we're going to do right here today. So just a little bit of that. Okay, so so here's the fun part. Trying to put clothing on our little mannequin thing here. And there's lots of ways to kind of perceive and do wrinkles. And obviously style uh, gets in the way or, you know, becomes a factor because we all like to draw, you know, a little bit differently and perceive even wrinkles differently. There's things like pinches, so you got to be aware of where the material pinches. So let's just say that you get some pinches that occur 
you know, on the sides of the arms. So it pinches under the arms and kind of comes up and out a little bit. So like this, so you'll, you'll see pinches there. You know, and don't be afraid to look down at your own shirt, right? And then the other thing that happens, you get pinches and then you get like these, I'll just call them swirls. I mean, I guess they're still pinches, but you'll notice that at the bottom of a shirt, most uh, materials, it kind of swirls back and forth. Now, you're not going to see this as much on your, your comic art, probably. You know, it depends on, again, the style, but you're just going to get a couple of these in here. So... Let me just draw this off the side and show you. Uh, I kind of explained this a little bit in the last video, but uh, it was more on wrinkles on uh, monster skin or whatever. But but the thing is, is that you're basically, you have to think of it like this. Like that the wrinkle is coming around and then it's fading out a little bit. So it's it's like an energy thing. You want to think about the pinch and the fold here being the the most extreme point of energy in a sense. And then it fades and dissipates out. So... And then what happens is the material will generally round back just a little bit, and then that'll occur again. And I think the tricky part here is not to be so repetitive with it. And this is actually where you start to get these, these dips and these, uh, you know, I call them V's, but they're kind of like a U shape really, but they crisscross. So you'll get one here, you get one over here. It depends on, <clears throat> excuse me, it depends on how, uh, you know, taut the material is and how, uh, how thick as well. So if you're doing leather, then leather is going to have these bigger versions of this and, uh, you know, kind of a more significant bend around this way because it's a thicker material where a thinner material, you're going to get these very thin versions of this. So that's kind of, you know, in a quick nutshell version of what the material does generally, but then it reacts so many different ways with anatomy. You know, some little things you can do that kind of convey it so you can get some wrinkles in here. You know, again, these are more like pinches that occur. And then you can think about, you know, shading the divides of them. So you might have like a shadow up here and a shadow back here. You just don't want to make it overly repetitive. It's pretty easy to fall into that because, you know, it's, it's like you could just go like this and there's your wrinkles. But it's not that simple. Um... Then the other thing is, is you got to think about these wrinkles coming out and again, kind of dissipating, or I don't know what word to use there, but fading off into the rest of the material. So you want to use like some little rendering lines or something like that to show that it's not just a line. It's, it's like coming out and then fading off. The other thing is that you want to think about these all being different. So again, kind of what we talked about over here, you might have an area where there's a bigger bulk of shadow. Uh, I don't know what that part looks right, but you want to kind of show that these areas aren't all the same. Um, so let me zoom up here and try to illustrate what I'm saying. You don't want it to look like, you know, even though you're shading it and doing the fade off line, you don't want to just keep doing that. See how it's going to look, it, it doesn't look interesting and it doesn't read like clothing. It just reads like a texture almost. So what you have to do is break this up a bit and you have to change... The direction it goes a little bit you got to give it more of an organic kind of feel here and there and some areas you're going to shade differently so that you can get this feeling that some are thicker some are thinner a couple tight succession wrinkles whatever and now again this is going to vary based on the material the other thing you can do is even if you don't want to cover up all this anatomy that you drew in you could do some wrinkles like this so this is real popular I do this a lot in my style, actually. So I'll put like a drop shadow in between. So it's it's like kind of like uh, veins. It's the same thing when you're doing veins. Like you can put this drop shadow on one side. You can erase back the line on the other side. And, you know, you can get in here and noodle around and do this as detailed as you want. But what you can do is establish kind of that the material is stretching over the two uh, muscles and that you're getting this kind of, uh, negative space wrinkle or whatever you want to call it but it's just that little highlight on the top and you really don't even need that top line that I just added I just want to show you that you want to get used to leaving out things like that and letting the uh, the viewers eye kind of connect the dots and you're basically gonna get you know when somebody shades this when they color it whatever uh, it's gonna read you know a bit better but these wrinkles are pretty easy to do you can do these wherever again you don't want to overuse them it's real easy to do that as well um, what else? So these back down to these wrinkles here, because I think these ones are pretty important. 
uh, for making it effectively look like a shirt. So you want to think about, even if the shirt's not tucked in, but if it is tucked in, you're going to get some pinches that occur this way, like that. And then you're going to get these uh, kind of swirling folds. And again, this relates to that little diagram right there. So it's going to come around. You're going to get a little bit of a kind of a bump. And then if it's real tight, you're just going to probably see the bump. You're not going to see this dip inward. Keep in mind when it goes like this and it dips inward and then back out, this can be more like a, a leather coat or something like that. And again, the folds are going to be larger if it's leather. So it's going to be something like a big fold, a dip in, and another big fold. And these folds can go back and forth like this. They can you know, overlap and kind of take precedence over another. And that's where you get these little pockets of shading. And then that's when your rendering comes in. But just keep in mind, you know, thin material, you know, thick material. Just It's pretty simple, but figured I'd write it there for you. You know, so just something like that. Just think of it like that. It should become a little bit easier. But yeah, so back to this. So this is a thin material. It's swirling around. You know, kind of draw these overlapping V shapes. So if you see that and that, you can kind of throw those in for um, quick uh, reads of what you're going to do. And then soft erase and redraw over top. And then those little bumps on the side. And then vary up the pattern. And then as this comes up on the form, it, again, I'm, I can't think of a better word. It fades off or dissipates. I keep wanting to say dissipate. But uh, it does. It just kind of fades off and then it, it jumps into the larger form so again don't do this all throughout it should be uh, heavier in one spot and then it should be less noticeable as it uh as it goes up on the character or something like that and you're going to use your line weight to help sell this and you know push the definition around of the, the anatomy i guess but and then don't be afraid to bring this over to the other side as well so you might have just a little pinch over here and uh, I don't, that one didn't read very well. Let me check here. So a little overlap there. Here and there you can just kind of add these. So this is based upon you know how much detail and how much you want this to read as a material. Like a shirt versus uh, a skin tight suit. So obviously if it's a skin tight suit you might do very little of these wrinkles. Uh, so that you can you know really keep the focus on the anatomy. That's up to your drawing style and what you're looking to uh what you're looking to do and then you're still going to shade you're still going to render uh, but you want to kind of make this all work together so you're also going to get some pinches right here again depends on the material a little bit you might you know say this is a um, a collared shirt you want to also try to get in the feeling uh, that there's a a little bit of thickness to the collar so another thing that uh, you might want to do depends again on the um, type of uh, clothing this is so if this is a skin tight superhero suit you're, you're probably just going to go as simple as drawing a shape but you might render and when you render you might leave just a little bit of a gap so again that that kind of makes that read like it's got a lip to it uh, that's one way to do it another way if it's more of a shirt you know this is more of a person walking around uh, not on superhero activity duty or whatever uh, you might draw the lip uh, away from the anatomy like this so you actually show that lip um, so you see that it's a, a little bit more of a raised material it's not just and likewise you can do all the shadows in the anatomy from underneath so as the shirt rounds over instead of just having it come flat you start to uh, shade into the areas a little, little bit of like a drop shadow or whatever and again that helps it read a little bit more like a material floating over top and so on and so forth so you can keep taking this idea you can say well this shouldn't be a complete circle or oval right if it's a shirt if it's a loose material so then you start to make this line a bit more bumpy and you know intentionally so you're you're trying to emulate a softer material that might have you know a bit of flow to it or it might dip down where the chest muscles are whatever so a lot of times whenever you're doing this it's it's thinking about the surface as you're illustrating it's not just 
flat out drawing. You know, you got to really think about the material. Um, and obviously, like I'll always say, look at reference, especially with clothing. I always, uh, I always pull reference if I start struggling with clothing because it's just, you know, it's everywhere. You can find great reference for clothing anywhere you look. But, uh, you know, finding great reference for the superhero forms is a little bit trickier. So let's see if that kind of covers it. So we've got a, um, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Technical difficulties, folks. All right, so also we can still get in here and shade and get like the uh, the plane changes. So I like to always put this kind of shadow right here. It's more of a uh, style choice than anything, but it's uh, it's a nice way to, to shift the plane change. So to show that this person's so fit that the chest kind of comes out like this and it starts to do this as, as it goes around. Um, again, it's not realistic. You know, you're not going to see that in somebody that's uh, bulked up and even wearing a pretty tight shirt. You're not going to see all this. So this is just style choice. But you, what you can do so it reads a little better is break up some of this like line work. You don't need a, an overly defined line like I did there. That's just, again, the way I like to draw. I like to kind of overdo it, but that's, uh, again, that's more style. So let's see if uh, there's anything else. Uh, other than this, I would say that, you know, just rendering out more shadows to make this read properly. So shapes of shadows. So now we've got enough of this in place to kind of uh, jump in here and render it a bit further. Mix up these shadows and try to feel out different um, thickness of the material so it doesn't all read as the same type of fold. Try to think about it bending and curving around the, uh, the waist of this character. And then as it gets up here, just more lightly done. I'll try to bend some of these wrinkles back as well. So you can see I've kind of overly, you know, put them all in the same direction and too, uh, kind of too similar. So I need to break that up a little bit, but I should be able to bring that out a little bit more as I refine it as well. So so a little bit of rendering lines to round out some of these areas. And break up some of these lines because it is just a bit much. Um, one thing you can do to soften this up is actually just do some of this. So instead of drawing a line for the uh, divide of the stomach or whatever, I can just kind of shade like this. Try to make it read uh, with just you know some of that cross hatching or line work like that. Same thing with the chest here. I'd probably erase back some of this line here. Let the shadow do the work. So maybe shade the side of the chest here. And then just render that out. So hopefully you can see how that starts to work. And this is just really a rough sketch. I would actually take the information here, soft erase it, redraw it. Uh, but that's that's really it. I mean, it's there's enough of it here for me to see what's going on and hopefully for you to learn from this lesson. That's the main thing. But, uh, but that's basically how I do it. So I might just kind of keep picking at it and add these little wrinkles in here and there. But ultimately what I'm looking for is just a feeling that it reads as material, that there's kind of a uh, shirt design here, but then also that it, it feels like a soft material over top of, you know, pretty buff superhero person. But, um, but again, I have to think about those materials and the way they react. So try these little, uh, you know, techniques over here. 
I find those to be very helpful. Like I kind of mentioned in my last video, I always think of lasagna noodles. Maybe it's because I'm Italian and I like pasta. I don't know, but that's kind of what I think about whenever I do curtains, drapery, clothing, whatever. You just want to think about this dimensional ridge that you're going to get. And then also the fact that it kind of V's back and forth. And yeah, study reference and have fun with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and time lapse this next part where I render out this drawing and finish it off. And let me know what you think in the comments section below. And uh, more content is on the way, so be sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for the support of the channel. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.